the Nintendo Switch, the handheld console hybrid that just keeps giving. But it's also got quite an expansive library. So whether you're an existing Switch owner looking to complete your collection, or maybe someone new to the Switch family looking where to start, look no further. We put together a list of the 15 best Switch exclusives. So let's get going. Look, let's just get this one out of the way. Breath of the Wild has been there since the Switch's launch, and to this day, remains among the best of all time for the console. It's not only the Zelda game to completely rethink most of the series' conventions, but equally challenge the conventions of open-world game design, and its influence can already be seen across so many other games today. Its world and its systems and how all its elements work together is only a breath of its brilliance. Now, whether you're into how it changed the Zelda formula or not, there's no denying that it is an absolute must-play Switch game. And yes, it's on the Wii U too, so it's not exactly an exclusive to the Switch, but I mean, come on, come on. The one, the only, the Italian Stallion. He needs no introduction. His hat, on the other hand, well, let's be real. It's the true star of Super Mario Odyssey, and that is Cappy. Super Mario Odyssey was the long-anticipated return to a full-fledged 3D Mario adventure, with the last one being Super Mario Galaxy 2 back in 2010. It's a masterclass on open-ended platforming awe and charm, and is amplified with the addition of Cappy, which can possess control over objects and enemies, and even add an additional layer of platforming genius to the mix. It's inventive, challenging, and exploding with personality. There is no doubt that it is among the best exclusives for the console. You know, Fire Emblem has really come a long way, and its popularity exploded with Three Houses, which took the strategy series and sandwiched it with a social sim. Fire Emblem Three Houses wasn't just a military story all over, but instead thrusted the player into the role of a professor at a military academy, with a heaping load of characters from three distinct schools. Most importantly, it gave you the chance to have tea parties between your tragic battles, which honestly made losing members of your team all the more devastating. If anything, the tea parties in and of themselves make Fire Emblem Three Houses a must-have. While Mario may be the more confident, pompous brother who gets all the glory, Luigi's actually the more complex of the two. He's sensitive, gentle, maybe even a bit of a wimp, but that doesn't stop him from strapping on a vacuum and sucking up some ghosts. Luigi's Mansion 3 is a great change of pace in Nintendo's roster of first-party games, adding more adventure elements, puzzle solving, and a hefty serving of spooks all mixed in. The game has marvelous and rewarding level design, and is leveraged with his goopy pal Guigi, which acts as another layer of puzzle solving and cleverly serves a means to play cooperatively with a friend. It's great, spooky fun times, and Luigi goes where Mario don't. Super Smash Bros. has cemented itself as a long-lasting hit for Nintendo, making it a mainstay for both casual and competitive players alike. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, as its title implies, is the ultimate installment in the series. It includes every character from every Smash Bros. game, and has been supported by an unusually lengthy cycle of post-launch support, adding new fighters, stages, and balance changes. Not to mention the wealth of its music. That game is like a time capsule of Nintendo's history. If you own a Switch and you don't own Super Smash Bros, well, then I think I commend you. Super Mario Maker for the Wii U was cool. It let players try out their game creation chops within the familiar framework of Mario. The sequel, though, not just expanded an already great toolset, but added a great campaign with pre-made stages made using the game's toolkit. It's the sort of game that gives you as much as you put in. Making levels is as much of a blast as it is to play other people's creations, even if some of them present an absolutely absurd challenge. Paradise Killer is kind of like if you took the open world exploration of Breath of the Wild and married it with Phoenix Wright, but set in a vaporwave themed island accompanied with an absolute amazing city pop soundtrack. It's a non-linear murder mystery set in a fantastical world with over-the-top personalities that's unlike anything you have ever played, and just oozes so much charisma and coolness it's hard not to be swooned by its originality. Now yes, Paradise Killer is also available on PC, but it's a console exclusive to Switch. Oh, and did I mention the soundtrack is amazing? Because um, yeah, it's amazing. 
Pokemon Sword and Shield is the first in the mainline series to really lift the franchise from its original handheld roots and make it more dynamic in its exploration and control, thanks to the introduction of its large, expansive wild areas where Pokemon wandered freely. It also added this feature where you can make your Pokemon super big, like kaiju-sized, and duke it out against each other. Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle is probably one of the strangest mashups in recent history, smashing together Nintendo's mascot characters with Ubisoft's bunnies. And if that wasn't puzzling enough, it's a turn-based cover shooter like XCOM, and somehow it just works? Like really well? So well, in fact, that it's getting a sequel, Sparks of Hope, which is expected to release in 2022. Super Mario 3D World was already a fantastic game, and its port from the Wii U to the Switch was long overdue. But what makes it truly shine as a rightful exclusive to the Switch is Bowser's Fury, the inventive open-world Mario game that offers a completely new and unique structure to the Mario formula. You can bank power-ups and choose your own order of stage challenges to gather cat shines, and then engage in an all-out giant monster brawl with Bowser. It's shorter than the average Mario game, but it packs a lot of fun into it that shouldn't go missed. And who knows, maybe Bowser's Fury will serve as the blueprint for the next Mario game. That'd be pretty cool. The Animal Crossing series has been an unassuming smash hit for Nintendo, but New Horizons for the Switch exploded upon its release in March 2020, just as COVID-19 lockdowns were beginning. And well, Animal Crossing was a beautiful way to maintain socialization while everyone was separated, but even despite the happenstance of its rather unintentional but timely release, it's still a cozy, simple game to keep you occupied while you harvest fruits, catch bugs, make friends, and customize your island. Capcom hit it out of the park with Monster Hunter World, and thankfully, Capcom took a lot of what made World great and put it into Monster Hunter Rise, an exclusive entry for the Switch, and one that has some major quality of life upgrades that makes Rise work miraculously well on the handheld console. New additions like Palamute Companions and the Wirebug tool make traversal getting around cool and speedy. And honestly, it's the best Monster Hunter has been for handheld portability, or, you know, just sitting and chilling at home too, but you know. Clubhouse Games. It's like a Swiss army knife of entertainment, and in all honesty, I'd barely leave home without it. It's a collection of 51 tabletop and card classics wrapped up beautifully in one package. We're talking chess and blackjack and dominoes and solitaire and more. It's absolutely great and has saved many boring visits to the laundromat or a short commute somewhere. Additionally, a good chunk of the games can be played multiplayer just using one console or multiple systems using Guest Pass, so that's pretty nifty. Splatoon is Nintendo's take on an arena-style shooter, and also, conceptually, one strange game to explain. So basically, you play as these squid kids known as Inklings, who cover the arena with ink, and whatever team covers the arena with the most ink by the end of the match, wins. It's a simple concept, but don't be fooled. The skill ceiling on this game is high. There's a large array of different weapons, each with their own distinct advantages and strategies. And traversing through the ink alone is a whole different story in terms of skill and movement. It's all bolstered by special gear, sub weapons, and more. There's a lot to Splatoon, and it's a total blast, but thankfully, despite that skill ceiling, it's an incredibly approachable game that's fun for all skill levels. Splatoon 2 also offers a really solid campaign and a co-op horde mode called Salmon Run, which definitely ups the ante in cooperation. Okay, yes, Mario Kart 8 is one of those games that also appeared on the Wii U, but the deluxe version for the Switch gave the game a significant upgrade by including everything added to the post-launch Wii U version, including all the extra tracks and racers like Link, Isabella, and Squid Kid from Splatoon. Content aside, it's just one of the best racing games out there, one that I've been playing since the Wii U days. It's truly never-ending fun, and there's a reason why it's the Switch's best-selling game. So if you're watching this, there's likely a chance you already have it. But, you know, that's what makes it a part of this list of best exclusives for the Switch, so yeah. The 15 definitive games that all Switch owners should consider having in their library. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to give us thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Oh, and if you're not already, consider subscribing too to stay up to date on everything related to gaming. All right, take care, folks. <laughs>